Hello, and welcome to the French Kiss Life podcast, all about living with more elegance, style, and joie de vivre in your everyday life. I'm Tanya Lee, your hostess. Let's get started. Well, hey, you. Welcome back to another episode of the French Kiss Life podcast. I am super excited about today's topic. In fact, as I was reviewing my notes for this, I think it's going to be one of my best ones yet because within what I'm going to share with you is truly the secret of how I completely changed my life. But even deeper, it's how I was born again literally creating a whole new self. So if you enjoy this episode, I'm going to also tell you about an upcoming event that I'm hosting. It's free. And I'm going to be talking about today's concept on a deeper level. So if you enjoy this episode, make sure you head over to frenchkisslife.com forward slash sweet spot. So what are we talking about? I want to share with you how to create what you want. So think about something you want, anything. And if you're stumped, here are some ideas to get you started. Maybe you want to lose weight or make more money or find the love of your life or travel to Paris. Maybe you want to get a puppy. Maybe you just want more space in your calendar. It's normal to want things. And not that you need it from me, but I give you full permission to allow yourself to want them. There is nothing worse than a woman who's not at peace with her desires You know, desires drive our existence. And when it's a true want, it's your soul leading you towards what people call your North Star, your purpose, your destiny. And how do you know if it's a true desire? Well, ask yourself this when you're thinking about what you want. Do you like your reason for wanting it? For example, if you want to lose weight to please your mother, do you like your reason? Probably not. And if you don't like your reason, start again until you find something you truly want. When it comes to creating results in your life, I bet there are areas where you feel confident in your abilities. For some women, they're confident that they can make money, but they struggle with love. For others, it's vice versa. So in that area that you're constantly being challenged with, I want you to think about what camp you fall into. So here's scenario number one. You take a lot of action to create what you want. And then when the results don't come quickly, you lose your steam. You begin to think about things such as I've set my sights too high or your positive action starts to fade and you start thinking maybe next year. Then a year passes and another year and you end up feeling really disappointed in yourself because you know you're not dumb, but you just can't seem to master yourself. Then there's scenario number two. Fear begins to set in as soon as you make the decision to go for it. And then you begin to visualize failure instead of success, imagining all of the times that you've tried and it did not work, or you don't even try at all. I call this failing before you even start. You focus on your past instead of your future, and these stories weigh you down into no action. And then there's scenario number three. You're just too busy to figure out what you want. And then you tell yourself that you don't know what you want. Everything feels so overwhelming. When in the world are you going to find the time to figure out and actually create what you want? So you resort to living each day as the day before, growing more frustrated with feeling stuck. No matter which camp you fall into, here's the holy grail for inside out success. You ready? Live as if your prayers have already been answered. The reason why you want anything is because of the feeling you think it will give you. So what if you were to live as if your prayers have already been answered? What if you were not to wait for your external world to change to start creating the emotions you're seeking? Unfortunately, most of us weren't taught how to create our worlds deliberately and on purpose from the inside out. We're too busy trying to create it from the outside in, which rarely works, not to mention it's exhausting. Here's the thing. Things and people don't create your feelings. 
That's right. Weight loss can't create your feelings. Money can't create feelings. Another person can't create your feelings. Even Paris cannot create your feelings. Your emotions are being created from your mind, the lens through which you see your world. Therefore, you can begin to create what you truly want now, not one day when your bank account is full of dollar bills or the scale shows you a certain number or you're living in that new apartment. I want you to really think about this. I want you to soak it in. When I learned this, my entire world changed because I changed. I stopped chasing feelings and started creating them in the life I had. I began to spend more time creating my inner world than chasing results in my outer one. This is the holy grail to living an insanely beautiful and awe-inspiring life. Because outward circumstances won't permanently change the way you feel. Isn't it interesting that people get what they want and they still don't feel happy or powerful or confident or abundant or loved? I know because I was one of them. Even when my clothing size was the smallest it had ever been, that size that I thought would give me so much confidence, guess what? I was an insecure mess. One of my clients came to me because she is constantly worried about money. She's worth over $5 million. Why does this happen? Again, it's because external circumstances cannot change how you feel. But what if I told you how you feel greatly impacts your external circumstances because they do. Take my client Janine, for example. She lost her husband in a car accident and she was so bitter and angry at the world. She had every reason to not love her life. But she began to observe her own mind and notice how it was impacting her life. And as a result, she decided she was going to break free from the chains of victimhood and start living in a beautiful state no matter what. Was she uncomfortable? Did she have doubt? Did she still experience worry and anxiety? Absolutely. But by observing these thoughts, she began to shift them and she fell in love with her life again, not when her external world changed, but way before. And guess what? She also fell in love with her now husband because she used her imagination and she broke free from the chains of her past. She created a new future through managing her mind by focusing on her internal world. These are facts. Without a dime entering into your bank account, you can begin to feel more abundant. Without losing a pound, you can begin to feel more confident. Without a man whispering sweet nothings in your ear, you can start to feel love. Without visiting Paris, you can start to feel alive. Create a beautiful inner world and a beautiful outer one will emerge. Now that I understand this ancient old wisdom, I spend 80% of my time cultivating my inner world, my mindset, and my feelings, and 20% of my time taking inspired action from that place. For almost a decade, I've experienced these kinds of miracles. Miracle number one, and you all, I never thought I would be a woman who can maintain her weight without dieting and all of the emotional turmoil that plagued me before. But here I am. I rarely think about food and weight. It's like not, it's like a non-issue. That is a miracle. And it's because I practice this concept. Also, I've created more abundance by breaking free from my trailer park mentality that locked me up in scarcity. I also have so much love in my life that sometimes it just leaves me breathless For someone who struggled with relationships and and connection, this is a miracle. And also, I went from being a full-time critical care nurse to a CEO of a company. Like I never saw that one on the radar. So contrary to popular, popular belief, I didn't need to move to Paris to feel a sense of beauty and elegance in my everyday life. I didn't need a ton of money in the bank to start feeling so much gratitude and abundance. I didn't need to be a certain size to feel incredibly sexy. I didn't need a company to start feeling successful on a daily basis. I created those feelings ahead of time. And then my external world started to mirror back to me my wants. So how did this happen? 
Again, I stopped chasing things and started creating feelings instead. And as I created a new inner reality, my outer one began to change as a result. I stopped waiting until one day to create what I wanted. And I started to create the feeling of having it now. I started living as if my prayers have already been answered. Now, I only received this memo of how life works about 10 years ago, but when I did, and I began to apply it with every fiber of my being, everything has changed. If you told me even a decade ago that I'd be the woman I am today, I'm sure I would have given you the big old eye roll. But when you create a miracle mindset, you'll find miracles everywhere. All it takes is learning how to live in what I call your sweet spot, that state of being where your mind, your heart, and your actions are aligned. And again, if you want to learn more and go deeper into this and how to live in your sweet spot, I want to invite you to my upcoming French Kiss Life live soiree, where I'm going to be sharing with you a fresh approach of creating what you want by learning how to live in your sweet spot. You can go to frenchkisslife.com forward slash sweet spot to join us. So let's talk about creating from a place of already having it. So I'm going to share with you a story about two friends, two of my dear, dear friends. These are two completely separate conversations that I had over the course of one week with two of my girlfriends. And the topic, love life problems. Can you relate? (laughs) So they appeared to be different problems, but they were the same symptom and the same desired feeling. So friend number one had been single and chasing love for years. And poor thing, she was a mess. She often joked that she was selling her soul every weekend to hopefully land a husband. Every bad date, rejection, unanswered calls would spin her into a state of unworthiness and fear that she'd be an old maid. So we got together one night over a glass of wine and I asked her why she wanted a husband so badly. And she said, I want to share my life with someone. And I asked her why. And she said, because I want to feel love. I don't want to feel alone anymore. I want to feel love. So that's friend number one. So let's talk about friend number two. This friend had been married for 25 years. She has a beautiful family with two grown girls. She lives in a beautiful custom home and she's traveled the world. Yet she was devastated as to how alone she felt in her marriage. And so our conversation went something like this. She said, I want to feel appreciated and sexy and adored by my husband. And I said, why do you want your husband to do that? And what it boiled down to is she wanted the same thing as my other friend. She wanted to feel loved. For my single friend, I encouraged her to begin creating the feeling that she thought she'd have with a man now and to play around with acting as if if her prayer had already been answered. She agreed to not go on a date until she was able to sit with a man and feel so much love for herself at the same time. In the meantime, she began to envision a wonderful partner in her life. She began to celebrate her marriage ahead of time. She started going out with her girlfriends more. It was fascinating to see her go from feeling desperate to feeling so in love with herself and her own life. Six months later, she had a date. And I got a text from her an hour before he was to pick her up. And she said, Tanya, I'm so nervous. I don't want to be desperate, approval seeking or selling my soul again. And I said, well, what is it that you do want? And it all boiled down to her first desire. She's like, I want to have fun and feel love. And so I told her, I said, then that's who you'll be. You will be a fun, loving woman. And guess what? She just celebrated her five-year anniversary with that guy. Now, for my married friend, I offered her the exact same advice as my single friend. I just shifted it around a bit. I told her that it's not her husband's job to create her feelings. It's hers. I encouraged her to start appreciating and loving herself, as well as appreciating and loving her husband. Why? Because it feels good to you to love and to appreciate. And as a friend, I also gave her a few other ideas to implement to help her spice up her relationship, some of which probably not appropriate for this podcast, but you know what I mean. But at the core of our conversation was her understanding that her husband cannot create her feelings of love. Only she can do that. So she began to focus on what she loved about him. She started to love him no matter what. 
And the man he became in that process was a partner who mirrored back to her those loving feelings and actions. Yes, she started to feel loved, appreciated, and adored. Today, their relationship is spicier than ever, and they are planning on renewing their wedding vows this summer. Like my friends, I know that you can create what you want, but but here's what you must know. To create it, you must become it. If you want love, you can't separate yourself from that emotion. If you want riches, you can't walk around focused on what is lacking in your life. If you want health, you can't focus every day on all that makes you feel unhealthy. And if you want appreciation, you can't gain appreciation by focusing on everything you don't appreciate about yourself and others. And if you want peace, it starts with you. You can't go around, you know, claiming, proclaiming that you want world peace when you are at war with yourself and you're picking battles and fights with other people. As a mentor to women, my gift is helping you create what you want. Yes, I want to see you rocking that dress, depositing piles of money in your bank account. I want to see you arm in arm with that sexy man doing work that ignites you. And of course, I'd love to see you in Paris one day, maybe even with me. However, the best way to create what it is that you want is to take action from the place of already having it. So are you still stuck? Reverse it. Here's what I mean. The reason why so many women feel stuck, confused, and miserable is that they're constantly trying to rearrange their circumstances without rearranging their mind. Here's some ways that I see this happening in my clients' lives. Waiting for your husband to behave differently so that you can feel more love. Trying to grow your business so that you can feel more security. Seeking your mother's approval so that you can feel understood or wanting your job to be different so that you can feel more creative, or wanting your friend to call you more so that you can feel appreciated. The real secret is to take that same formula, but reverse it. Create your emotions first, and then the creation of the desire in your outer world begins to show up for you because like attracts like. But the best part, you get to experience what you're truly after right now, which is an emotion. So now it's time for some tough love from Tanya. (laughs) My clients often joke that I dish out the toughest love. And as a master life coach, this is my job. And you know what? I'm extremely thankful for the mentors and friends who have done the same for me. When one of my clients is stuck, all I do is hold up a mirror to her own mind and invite her to take a look at what she's creating. So here's the truth. It is not the job of your husband, your company, your mother, your friend, or your job to give you what you're after. In fact, those people and things cannot give you what you want because it's a feeling. So stop outsourcing your emotional life to the world and commit to doing the hard but extremely rewarding inner work that creates a lasting change. Only you can create your feelings. So Please don't wait for the world to change to feel better. You need to begin to shift your thinking now to feel better. And when you feel better, think about it. You take more inspired actions. These are the very actions that will help you create what you desire in your outer world. And then and only then will you be able to create what you want. But what happens when creating what you want feels hard? It's time to evolve. Let's be honest, it's easy to feel good when the world is behaving according to our good guidebook, right? (laughs) It's doing everything you want it to do. Your hubby brings you flowers and you feel loved. You step on the scale and it says, hey, darling, you've lost five pounds and you rejoice. Everyone's telling you how great and amazing you are and you feel appreciated. But what about when the world isn't following your agenda? Congratulations. You've been handed a glorious invitation to evolve. Here's what I know. If we're looking for reasons to be fearful and worried, we'll find them everywhere. Equally, if we're looking for reasons to feel gratitude and love and joy, we'll find those everywhere too. So many women will say to me, well, Tanya, that sounds great, but my situation's different. I believe that this is just an excuse to stay where you are. So, I want to share with you a personal story about my recent invitation 
to evolve. So I received a big old invitation in my own life when my 18 year old daughter started to experience mysterious health symptoms. Out of nowhere, she started having joint pain, excruciating headaches, confusion, ringing in her ears, light sensitivity, unexplained weight gain, severe breakouts, memory loss, anxiety, panic. These are just a few of the things that we've been dealing with for 18, almost 18 months, almost two years. Now, I could have fallen into resentment, panic, worry, and fear saying things like, why her God? This shouldn't be happening. This was not our plan. She's only 18. Why me, God? Now, I'm not so enlightened that I can report to you that I haven't had fearful, sleepless nights and worrisome thoughts. And you all, I have spent more hours in prayer than the Pope, but I haven't spun out of control. Why? Because I know things now that guide me every day. First, Arguing with reality never produces a great result. It weakens me and only strengthens the situation. So I trust in a bigger plan that I can't often understand. Second, like my client Janine, who lost her husband, I'm aware of my thoughts and I consciously choose which ones will pass what I call my red velvet rope. Third, I know from past experience that I am a much more effective mother, friend, coach and overall human being when I'm dwelling in the feelings of what I want, not resisting what I don't want. So I've been asking myself this question every day, who do I need to be in order to be the best mother possible right now? Now here's a spoiler alert. My answer has never been worried, resentful, or fearful. Instead, the answer has always been things like loving, faithful, determined, healthy, or joyful. Oh yeah, being a mother is the greatest gift. It has given me the opportunity on a daily basis to practice changing my mind so I can create effective emotions. You know, I often go to my own mother for advice because I figured if she could handle me as a teenager, she can handle anything. (laughs) Yeah, I was a wild one, bless her heart. But anyway, on occasion, I have to remind my own mother, your worry isn't helping the situation. And I've had to take my own advice as a mother too. Here's the thing, to live an intentional, beautiful life, you must be greater than your environment. While we're still not in the clear with my daughter's health, I've had to see beyond her symptoms, the test results, or anything that tries to convince me that her situation is hopeless. I believe in miracles, (laughs) y'all. I've seen way too many not to, and I've trained myself to live with a miracle mindset. Nothing is hopeless. Did you hear me? Nothing is hopeless. The greatest comeback stories often occur after the greatest setbacks. So each day I practice creating an internal state that aligns with what I desire for both her and myself. I look for what I desire to see. I notice those little improvements every day, not the things that she's saying isn't working. I'm very mindful of the energy I allow into my sacred headspace. Only stories of healing are allowed around my neck of the woods. I also monitor my mind like it's top national security. Regarding my most recent situation, I'm only allowing thoughts such as the following to pass my red velvet rope. Things like she's getting better. Her body is healing. This situation is one of our greatest teachers. The body is miraculous. My daughter is so strong and courageous. And I even remind myself, you're a good mom. Because you know what? Us moms can be so hard on ourselves, and that too never serves us. Now, here's a note. Scary, anxiety-producing thoughts still come up for me, but I can either react to them or I can consciously choose where I focus, and I strive to do the latter over and over again. And guess what? These kinds of beliefs have inspired me to think creatively about how to help her heal. The perfect article pops up out of nowhere that leads to a call that provides another piece to the puzzle. Or I receive a message from someone who's heard what we're going through and connects me with a cutting edge doctor. 
I am convinced that what we've been able to accomplish health-wise so far with this new influx of energy and creativity could not have been brought about if I were to be stuck in worry, resentment, overwhelm, sadness, anxiety, just to name a few. And while I didn't even have this miracle on the radar screen, my daughter and I have become closer than ever before. We are laughing hysterically at midnight, FaceTiming an inspirational video we just saw, and more importantly, holding each other's hands through this journey. By practicing this way of being, I've become the kind of mom that my daughter wants to be around, not someone she avoids because I'm worried and stressed 24 seven. So I want to ask you, what do you need to rise above? Where in your life are you being called to be greater than your environment? For you, maybe it's the number in your bank account or your husband's behavior or the fit of your jeans or Uncle Bob's sarcastic comment. And instead, work on feeling in proportion to your desires, not your current reality. Instead of thinking the same old thoughts, doing the same old things, and feeling the same old ways, you maybe think about what's abundant in your life, looking for enoughness everywhere you you look. Maybe you focus on what you love about your husband instead of being irritated by the petty things. And remember, choose to feel love because it feels better for you. It actually has nothing to do with your husband. <laughs> What if you were to envision yourself being full of health and vitality to create a powerful feeling instead of honing in on the fit of your genes and feeling hopeless as a result? What if you practice seeing good old Uncle Bob's behavior as a reflection of his mind, not yours, and you choose to love him anyway? And sometimes you love people from afar. Women will say to me, but Tanya, that's ignoring reality or letting people get by with bad behavior. So let me be clear. To create something you've never had, you must become someone you've never been. So to create a new reality, you must stop seeing your current one the same way you've been seeing it and start to look for the possibility instead. The other thing is getting angry and resentful and withholding love doesn't punish the other person, only yourself. I believe you can create boundaries with love. And the upside to this way of being is you get to feel good and let people be who they are because they're going to be anyway. There will be circumstances in your life that will challenge you more than you ever wanted to be challenged. But if you're willing to accept the invitation, they will be your greatest teacher and help you evolve into the woman you desire to be. So tell me, what do you want? And why do you want it? And when you discover that feeling that you're really after, I want you to begin to think about how you can create that feeling now, not one day. And it will always start within your mind. Focus there. Spend time creating that beautiful inner world and be prepared for the miracles that will happen as a result. Now, again, if you want to dive deeper into this and figure out a way to actually apply it to your life, I would love for you to come to my upcoming French Kiss Life live soiree where I'm going to be diving deeper into how to get into your sweet spot. It's that delicious place where, again, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions are aligned. Head over to frenchkisslife.com forward slash sweet spot to join us. I look forward to seeing you there and I look forward to seeing you in the next podcast. Have a beautiful day. Cheers.